Welcome to Dorm Tech. Today, we're building the Ether Killer. Disclaimer, do not try this at home. An ether killer is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. You plug the ethernet into your computer and it fries your computer. You plug it into your router and it fries your router. All you gotta do is plug it in, then plug it into the wall and flip the switch. Everything gets fried. So be careful and do not try this at home. So, in order to complete this project, we're going to need a couple of things. Most of these things can be bought at your local hardware store or can be salvaged from parts you already have laying around. So first of all, we're going to need two ATX power cords. Um, these are very, very easy to find. One of these will be sacrificed for the sake of the project. The other one will be used to power it on when you plug it into the wall. Secondly, we're going to need a light switch. And this will be used to power on the um, ether killer once we finally have it built. Um, we're also going to need a light switch box, power box, not entirely sure what they call these, but I'm sure you've seen them in hardware stores before. And we're using a double one, so it will be large enough to house all of the components that we need to fit in there. Next, we will need an ATX female, um, I suppose I could call it an adapter. What it really is, is a, um, we basically pulled this out of an old broken power supply, and this is what we'll be plugging the um, ATX into to power the unit. Um, after this, we will need two packages of heat shrink, um, separate sizes. One will be for the ATX, and the other will be for the Ethernet. Next, we will need an Ethernet cord, and this Ethernet cord will be used to plug into whatever we are um, attempting to destroy, whether it be a router or a computer. Um, and finally, we will need a switch cover. And this is where we will mount the light switch, and this is also where our ethernet cable will be poking out of the housing. Um, in order to complete this project, we will need two tools, and the first of which is a trusty Dremel, which all of you hopefully should have at home. And secondly, we're going to need an ethernet copper cutter, and these can be found at a local hardware store for around $8. So, now that we have all of our supplies, let's begin. So. For our first step, we're going to be doing some work on the housing here. Um, as you can see, this housing has these unattractive little wings with the nails coming through them, and we're just going to dremel those right off because they're completely unnecessary for what we're going to do. So. And ta da! It doesn't have to be perfect and it can be ugly, but it'll work. So, in order to continue with our project, we're going to need some more mounting holes, which means more Dremel work. First, we're going to want to be able to mount this inside of the box. So, we're going to flip it over, and we're going to trace it along here. You should probably use some sort of marker or pencil for this, but we don't have one on hand, so I'm using the nail from the um, previous step. Notice that I'm not going to be tracing these because you're going to want to use these to mount but I'm tracing around here so that way when I cut it out the part that sticks out will fit inside of the box and these wings here will be able to screw in. Okay now that I've got it all traced it's time to begin the Dremel work. Also I'd recommend wearing safety goggles for this but we don't have those on hand either. Oh, fantastic. Once again, it might be ugly, but it'll work. Okay, so we've done a little bit of off-camera work here, and I'm going to explain it to you. We were able to mount the light switch and connect that to our ATX plug. Basically, we took the brown wire from our ATX plug and wired that to this part of the light switch so that when you flip the switch it turns off and on. Then we're having the black part of the ATX wired directly into the Ethernet as well as this white that comes off the other end of the light switch. The green wire here is for ground and won't be used in this video. 
So, now that we've got that out of the way, it's time to wire up the Ethernet. In order to do that, we're going to need, need to cut this Ethernet cord right in half. And then we will proceed to strip this Ethernet cord and separate all of the smaller cords within. And you see that they will be wound together, and we're going to unwind them and spread them all apart so that we can see each wire separate from the others. And now it's time to get to wiring. Okay, so now since we've gotten our wires all separated, it's time to begin to connect them to things. First of all, we're going to want to put it through our faceplate. That way we don't forget this later on and we'd be unable to put the faceplate on at all and it would look terribly ugly and there'd be exposed wires and whatnot, which is something that we would absolutely not want to happen. So once this is through your faceplate, you're going to want to separate the green and orange wires and then the green striped and orange striped wires. The green striped and orange striped wires will be connected directly to the white on the light switch and the green and orange wires will be connected directly to the black on the ATX power cord. So, let's begin. We're going to have to strip both the green, the orange, and the green striped and orange striped because those are the wires that we'll be using for this project. Okay, so now I have the wires that we need all stripped. The rest of the wires, to avoid confusion, can simply be chopped right off. That way, you won't have to worry about them for the rest of this build. Alright. Now what we're going to want to do is wire this to this. So, we will need to strip these two wires and put heat shrink on them. I might as well start with the heat shrink so that way I don't forget it later on. And prepare to get excited, because I'm about to strip. Okay, now we've got everything we need all stripped and ready to go. We're going to wire it up for the final part of our project. The white stripe and orange stripe, as I said before, will be connected to the white wire. And so, we'll just twist them together as such. And then we'll slide the shrink tubing over any exposed wire. And this is very important to cover all of the exposed wire, so that way nothing goes wrong. Because this is a very high voltage project, and we do not want any problems, electrical fires, etc. Okay, sweet. Now that we have everything wired, we can proceed to put it inside of our case. Now, this part can be a little bit tricky because we want to make sure that there isn't any exposed wire, other than our ethernet cord, of course, while keeping everything nice and pretty inside of our box. But, as you can see, it won't take you very long, and you should be able to get your cover on. And from there, our last step will simply be to screw the cover on and to give it a little test run. Here comes the duct tape. We're going to be using this to make sure that our Ethernet cord stays inside of the case and we can't pull this wiring out of this hole. So. I'll just duct tape the orange ethernet cord right to the side of our box here. Alright, and our project is complete. And as you can see, absolutely gorgeous. So, it's time to take this badass on a little bit of a test run. Alright, now it's time to do our test. Get ready to see this laptop possibly explode. Allahu Akbar!
there was a popping noise and I smell something terrible. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> How is this laptop alive? Well, leave it to Dell to make something that won't die. <laughs> Dude, I just saw a spark. You did? <laughs> Good night, precious kumquat. <laughs> so, we've tested our ether killer, and from what you can see, it may seem like this experiment was not a success. But, all hope is not lost. What the camera didn't pick up in the last shot were the sparks and terrible smell that came out of the back of this computer when we turned this on. And even though the computer survived, of course it would be a Dell computer that could survive such a catastrophe, my hypothesis is that the ethernet will not work at all. So we're going to find out. I'm going to plug this ethernet jack that's connected to our network into the ethernet port here. And we shall see how well this laptop performed. That is absolutely no surprise. The ethernet is completely screwed and our ethernet adapter here is completely foobar. So if we were to use this device on some sort of switch or other networking equipment, I'm pretty sure that it would completely destroy that as well. So I'm going to mark this experiment not as a failure but as a success. Okay, remember to like and subscribe, and tune in next week for some new episodes. Us here at DormTech will take you on a journey into our server, our custom-built, cheaply-made ZI server that functions quite well, so stay tuned.